like to say great day to the villain audience. Welcome to Walking in the Spirit. I am Dr. Stefan Williams and I will be your host for today's program. We're going to continue on with our series entitled Elohim, the Archetype Original Pattern of the Universe. The Introduction. And those of you that are viewing this broadcast today, I would like for you to get out your Bibles, your notebooks, your pens, your pencils, your highlighters, and study with us. Let's continue on with the series. <clears throat> it says, as heretofore stated, the revelation of the archetypal pattern of the universe, it says to Elohim the archetype or archetypal original pattern of the universe, which is Yahweh himself in shape and form, see? It's Yahweh Elohim, or Yahweh Elohim Yashi right here, see? Once again, as heretofore states, the revelation of the archetypal pattern of the universe embraces the existence of Yahweh, his universal spirit law, and eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. And we have right here, which is our ages. It says first age, second age, third age, fourth age, fifth age, and sixth and seventh ages to come. And right here it says dispensations. All right, so this is our ages and dispensation chart here. So let, let me um, just um, just add a little bit more to this, what I just got to explain here. An age is synonymous to world. See, when you see age or world in your Bible, it's one and the same. And dispensations is the ordering of affairs uh, to mankind from Yahweh, like a timeline for man, okay? <clears throat> Once again, as heretofore stated, the revelation of the archetypal pattern of the universe embraces the existence of Yahweh, his, his universal spirit law, and eternal purpose through the dispensation ages. Compar comparatively, Speaking, this is a new divine, psychological, excuse me, let me start over again. It says, com comparatively speaking, this is a new divine, philosophical, scientific, spiritual, spiritual, scriptural, and revolutionary interpretation of the Holy Bible. It is supported by definite divine pattern and plan. It is supported by a definite divine pattern. Divine pattern. See. It is supported by a definite divine pattern and plan. Descript descriptively stipulated in scriptures of the Holy Bible itself. Um, it says here, Exodus 25 and 40. Write these chapters and verses down, ladies and gentlemen, and read the whole chapter for yourself. Once again, it says, Exodus 25 and 40. It says, eight, Hebrews 8 and 5. And 1 Chronicles 28 and 19, and John the second chapter, verses 19 to the 21st verse. And when you read those chapters and verses, it's, uh, um, it's, this here is a tangible threefold tabernacle pattern here that Yahweh Elohim Yahshua just, just, just uh, transfigured into. Okay? And this is an intangible tabernacle, tabernacle here, and this is a tab, this is the 
tangible tabernacle here that was pitched in Mount Sinai. See, that was struck for the children, of, children it was struck, by, struck to Moses to have the children of Israel to build Yahweh Elohim Yahshua, see, a tabernacle for him to dwell in according to the one that was shown him in the mount. That's, that's, that's according to Exodus 20, 25 and 40. In Hebrews 8 and 5, it speaks about this, um, this tabernacle here. First Chronicles uh, 28 and verse 19 speaks about the um, construction of this temple. See? In the tabernacle and the temple was pointing to the true temple, the true tabernacle, which is Yahweh Elohim Yahshua himself, see. And also John uh, second chapter verse 19 through 21st verse. It says, This interpretation is discreetly confirmed in every polytechnical detailed manner by the universal creation of Elohim, see? By the universal creation, see? By Yahweh Elohim. Yahweh Elohim Yahshua. These three are one. They're never except, separated at any time, see? He's threefold in his makeup, so creation has to come in threefold. In reality, he just transfigured into the days of creation. See, you see him here. He transfigured to the days of creation. See? see? Everything that you can see and can't see, visible or invisible. See? It just reflects him. He is it. He's the original. It says, this interpretation is discreetly confirmed in every polytechnical detailed manner by the universal creation of Elohim, both corporeal and incorporeal, see? Corporeal just simply means physical or visible, see, in incorporeal is spiritual invisible. See? You have it here on this chart here. It says in super incorporeal, which is Yahweh Elohim Yahshua himself, super incorporeal. Not just incorporeal, but super incorporeal, see? In physical form, see, is corporeal or physical. Okay, one and the same. All right. It says both corporeal and incorporeal, visible and invisible. And that's according to Romans, the first chapter, verses 19 to the 20 verses. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, every chapter and verse that I call out, I would encourage you to write them down and read them for yourself. Read the, read what's, read the whole chapter. Okay? But focus on the verses that I called out. But I would I would advise you and encourage you to read the whole entire chapter, okay? It says, moreover, I firmly I firmly believe that the vision of revelation, once again, the divine vision, you see, you see, you see a panoramic vision or, or panoramic divine vision, you see. It says here, panoramic vision, or panoramic divine vision, we understand that John is considered John the Revelator, see? So he's had a divine panoramic vision, accompanied by a divine panoramic revelation. It says here at the top here, Revelation 1, verses 12 to 19, see? You have here, Proverbs 8 and 22 through 30th verse, see? It's 
more chapters and verses that goes along with this. You can also read um, Exodus 24, verses 1 and 2, and verses 9 to the 18th verse. See, see there's your visions, visions, vision, revelation, okay? A, a divine vision without a divine revelation is no good. Once again, <clears throat> it says, <clears throat> Moreover, I firmly, I firmly believe that this divine vision and divine revelation is to be regarded as one of the greatest and most, out, and most out, uh, astounding uh, panoramic visions. See? Once again, I firmly, I firmly believe that, that this divine vision, see, which is Yahweh and Yahshua himself, which in reality is only one vision, and that's him himself, see. Yahweh and Yahshua, see. This is the vision himself, see. Once again, moreover, I, I firmly believe that this divine vision in the Bible revelation is to be is to be regarded as one of the greatest and most astound, astounding of uh, panoramic visions. You see, it says here, panoramic. That means all encompassing, see, or from all angles. Panoramic vision and revelations ever given to mankind since the creation of the material. Or, or stellar parts, see, of the universe. It says, to the very best of our limited artistic ability, we have drawn pictorial illustrations, which you see behind me, are pictorial illustrations of the divine vision of cutting by the divine revelation, and I, I, can, I, I can also mention that this, uh, mention this too, that this uh, pictorial illustration is actually also your Bible in pictorial form. Okay, as I stated in our last, in our last, um, in our last show, um, that these charts you will see has chapters and verses on it. Like for instance, this says Matthew 17, verse 1 through 13. It says Matthew 16, 13 to 17, verse in, in, in verse 28, so forth, so forth and so on. It says here Acts second chapter, see? It says here Luke 20 and 46 here. It says here Ezekiel 37, verse 1 through 14, so forth and so on, see? It says here Exodus 12, verse, verse 1, it has the pictorial, see, to go along with the with the written or with the verbal. Alright, very important. It says here, Exodus 19 chapter, it says here, Galatians 4 and 25. Okay? You have one here, it says 1 Corinthians 15, 53. See? So forth and so on. You have here Genesis 17 verse 10 to 14. See? Alright? It says, <clears throat> to the very best of our limited artistic ability, we have drawn pictorial illustrations and charts of the great panoramic vision showing the divine pattern. See? Showing the, 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 and showing the divine pattern and spirit law embodied therein and try hard to explain its true meaning to religious teachers, philosophers, scientists and medical doctors. No man, Jew or Hebrew or Yehudai, Gentile, Roman Catholic, Protestant, or teachers of philosophy and other scientific or cosmic phases of nature who have heard and understood the explanation of the divine archetype pattern. See, see the divine archetype pattern which is Yahweh Elohim Yahshua himself, see, is the archetype original pattern of the entire universe. Once again it says, it 
It says, the divine archetype pattern and the universal spirit law embodied therein and his operation shown by illustrative charts, which is behind me here, has ever been able to refute the divine authenticity and unerring accuracy and infallibility of this teaching. It says, a profound knowledge and understanding of this divine panoramic vision operating first in the realm of eternity operating first in the realm of eternity it says Yahweh's spirit manifested within the clouds symbolizing eternity see Jerusalem above see you have here, creation abides within Yahweh or eternity. See? It says beginning here, it says ending here. See, at the bottom part of this, this ending this chase of chart, it says the clouds symbolize an eternity. Very important. You have chapters and verses, once again, see, to go along with, with, the, to go along with the pictorial, see? It says Acts 17, 28. See? Proverbs 8, verses 22 to the 33rd verse. It has here Isaiah 57 and 15. It has here uh, Genesis 2 and 4. All right? Once again, it says, a profound knowledge and understanding of this divine panoramic vision operating first in the realm of eternity, thereafter through the ages and dispensations, see, by universal spirit law. <clears throat> On this chart here, It says, it says, um, Ten Commandments, uh, uh, referring to the Ten Commandment laws at that time, under the Old Covenant. And see, over here it says, Law of the Spirit. See? A universal spirit law, okay? Once again, it says, a profound knowledge and understanding of the divine panoramic vision operating first in the realm of eternity and thereafter through the dispensation ages by universal spirit law absolutely abolish all practical forms and classification of superstitions, willful ignorance, satanic or false doctrines, or erroneous religious concepts, man-made traditions, and customs, so-called atheism, agnosticism, skepticism, skepticism, witchcraft, and idolatry, and all types of previously established, fulfilled and abolished carnal ordinances, fulfilled and abolished carnal ordinances, like I said, you have the we have the pictorial pictorial to go along with the verb. We can pick up according to ordinances, see? Hebrews 9 and 10, see. Alright. We'll mention about carnal ordinances. Matter of fact, let me um let me just double check and make sure that is there. Hebrews 9 and 10. Let's see what it says. View an audience. Hebrews 9 and 10. Yes, Hebrews 9 and 10 says, which stood only in meal and drink offerings, see, and various washings and carnal ordinances. See, right here, very important. Must take the pictorial to go along with the verbal. See, Hebrews 9 and 10 was saying that chapter and verse. Cardinal ordinances, see? All right? Just want to validate. 
So carnal, carnal just simply means natural, a, a literal, physical, okay? The physical ways of worship your, your creator in, is, is, is outdated now, see? That has been nailed. You see it says nailed, to have nails here, nailed to his cross, brought to an end. In the what? In the physical worship in your creator now, see? You now must worship your creator now in spirit and in truth. Uh, just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, here. Let's get John 4, John the 4th chapter, in verse 24, from the Holy Name Bible. It says, For Elohim is spirit, and they that worship him must, must worship him in spirit and in truth. See? Not in physical, literal ways now. That's, that's been brought to an end. We now must worship our Heavenly Father or our, or our Creator who is one and the same in spirit and in truth now, according to John 4 and 24. It says, Cardinal ordinances which were under the old covenant, see, with Israel, further this teaching investigates the cosmographical structure of the universe and the and, and the unexplained so-called law of nature, which in, which in reality is universal spirit law. Okay. Um You have these um, these hearts here. It's symbolic of uh, universal spirit law. Okay, that's what these hearts represent. Okay, we don't have time to get in, get into that as as of right now. Okay, but it says it says. Call the ordinances which were which were under the old covenant or old yeah old covenant old testament see is fulfilled or just brought to an end completely and converted to a spiritual reality now okay law of the spirit of spirit law see it says call the ordinances which were under the old covenant with Israel further further this teaching investigates the cosmographical structure of the universe. And the unexplained so-called law of nature, which in reality is universal spirit law, the powers latent in man, see, and teaches mankind of, of his inseparable relationship, of his inseparable, see, meaning our, help, our Heavenly Father, who was also our Creator and our Savior, one and the same, is not up in the sky. He's right within you as of right now. Always has been. That makes that makes us be inseparable. We're not separated from my heavenly father. It says this teaching investigates the cosmographical structure of the universe and the unexplained so-called law of nature, which in reality is universal spirit law, the power latent in man, and teaches mankind of his inseparable relationship with Yahweh Elohim Yahshua, see? All right? And have and to have explicit faith in Yahweh Elohim Yahshua and worship him in spirit and in truth. 
in spirit and in truth, and it refers to what I just got to reading uh, uh, about, about about 30 seconds ago. It gives the chapter and verse of John 4 and 24, see? As Yahweh Elohim has originally intended according to his eternal purpose, is, and, and, his eternal, and his eternal purpose is according to Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 9 through the 12th verse. Like I said, read the whole chapters for yourself, ladies and gentlemen, but focus on the verses. But read the entire chapter. Alright? Let's continue on. It says, Furthermore, since the scriptures teach us that man is made since the scripture teaches, teaches that man is made in the likeness and image of Yahweh Elohim by the pattern of the, uh, by the, pattern of the tabernacle, see? Tabernacle pattern, tabernacle, tabernacle of man, man by the pattern. It says, furthermore, since the scriptures teacher that man is, is man is made in the likeness of the image of Elohim and he the man is willing to confess that he knows very little about the anatomy and and physiology of his own body which he has had all his life how then could we expect him to know Yahweh Elohim as he really is and actually exists and as he really is see okay so um we're going to end um, in this show uh, as of right now. Until we meet again next week, I like to leave you with these few words: righteousness, peace, and joy in the precious kingdom of Yahweh Elohim, Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah.